Hey everybody, welcome back to Video So today we're going to be continuing the series Emulation Night School where I show you how to set up some of the most popular emulators for your Windows based PCs, how to get games running, set up for controls, and enjoying them the best way possible. And today if you can't tell already, we're doing the Sega Model 2 Arcade Board with Model 2 Emulator. It's an old piece of software that has not been in active development since 2014, but it runs incredibly well if you get it set up correctly. Before we get too far involved, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. And remember, if you need specialized help, you can join the $10 Patreon tier where you get access to me to answer any questions you may be having. But the Model 2 emulator software is going to be over on Sega Retro because the website for this emulator is no longer in service. Active development stopped around 2014, and while this is very good, it is not in active development. You'll see the last build date was January. 2nd of 2014 over 10 years ago which is just wild to think that's how long it's been since this has seen any updates once you get the download put it in any folder you want your model 2 emulator to live this is not specific and go ahead and extract the zip file just do extract here from there you're going to see you're going to get a bunch of different files and you're going to get two executables multi cpu and emulator i'm sure your computer has more than one core in it so you're going to want to use multi cpu before you do anything just launch it once because it's going to add some data and folders to your actual installation that you're going to need you'll see they're empty for now but they will fill up in just a moment now if you try to load any sort of roms without putting the files in it's going to look like this and i want you to see this screen in case you have bad files this is also what you're going to see it's going to say unable to load and then it's going to give you a file name so obviously the first thing we need to do is get games over to the emulator so go ahead and make a folder and call it roms it can be lowercase it can be uppercase i haven't found this to make any difference but this is where the emulator is going to look for the files and it's not going to tell you that's what it does so like i said lowercase uppercase doesn't really matter just make Make sure you have a ROMs folder in where the executable for Model 2 emulator lives. And I know there are different pieces of software that will basically auto configure a lot of this for you. But one, I want you to learn the process, and two, I think you're going to have a better experience if you learn how to manually articulate these things. So go ahead and put whatever Model 2 arcade ROMs you want into the ROMs folder. They are all going to be zip files. Do not unzip them here. You're just going to leave them as zips. The actual emulator is going to unpack them as it uses them. You'll see here that every single game I have is in a zip file. If you hover the mouse over it, you're going to see the different EEPROMs that would be on the original board. This is how it should look. Just do not unzip those zip files or else nothing is going to work. So now if we pop back into the emulator in and of itself and we go ahead and hit load ROM, you'll see at the top you're going to have a game, a ROM set, and a system. I recommend hitting game. This will put all of the Model 2 games in alphabetical order because by default it's going to go Model, Model 2A, Model 2B, such as that. And if we just click on a game that we have the files for, the House of the Dead here, it's going to immediately load up and execute the code and play the game so long as you have the right ROMs in your folder. You will notice that the aim is completely off. That needs to be set, and we'll get to that in just a moment because I know a lot of people are going to want to play the House of the Dead, and one of the number one questions I get is how to calibrate your aim so that it is rock solid stable because playing like this is not a good time whatsoever, but having the crosshair exactly where you need it to be is super important, and that makes this game so much better and because a lot of people aren't familiar with arcade hardware we're going to go over all the test menus where you do this but let's take a look at something like Daytona USA here you will see if you go into game and controls you have a full controller configuration option I will show this more in depth but we're going to have to configure the controls for each individual game because every single game has its own set of controls and you have to calibrate them for that particular game for games that use analog you can set that with whatever controller you want for games that just use digital patch you'll be able to set that as well and you'll see here I'm just using an Xbox one X controller and I can set all of the shifts to whatever button I want get into the game set my steering as well as my acceleration and just be able to play what I recommend here is setting the steering to the left analog stick axis setting gas to your right analog trigger and setting brake to your left analog trigger I use the d-pad for shift and the four face buttons for the four different cockpit views within the game you can set this up however you want but you do need to set up the controls per game at least once once you set the controls for each individual game they will persist every time you launch the emulator so just make sure you get it right and if you don't you can always recalibrate it again but let's talk about the test menu to access this you're going to press f2 and to navigate you're going to press f1 pressing f2 again on anything other than exit will articulate the settings like you definitely want red blood in the house of the dead if you're not familiar with arcade 
arcade test menus, just take a peek around and see what options there are. But as far as light gun games are concerned, and the House of the Dead, you're going to go to gun adjustments and you're going to go to player one gun adjustment. I've left the mouse cursor on. I'll remove that in just a moment. I've already done this. But place the cursor over the points in which it wants you to calibrate. Wait just a few moments and you will now see that the mouse, the cursor that Model 2 emulator puts in, as well as that bullet effect that the Model 2 emulator puts in on the hardware side, everything is 100% rock solid calibrated. And when we jump back into the game, you're going to see that we have perfect calibration. And the best part about Model 2 emulator is it's just such a good program when you get it running. This is definitely not the most modern application in the world. Like I said, it has a been an active development for 10 years and things on the emulation side were done differently but the great part is graphically and performance wise this runs pretty much the entire model 2 arcade library incredibly well if you wanted to play the house of the dead on an arcade board you need to have the board the light guns as well as a medium resolution monitor it is a very intensive process and this is still the best way to play the house of the dead it's just such a great time and it's so impressive how the emulator handles it and i know right now i'm playing with a mouse I'll go over other options in just a moment. But be aware on all mouse games that require reload, your left mouse button is going to be automatically bound to the shoot button and your right mouse button is going to be automatically bound to reload. It's going to be set like that right out of the box. If you're wondering how you shoot and reload, left click, right click, and you are good to go. And now you'll see when we get to the game compared to where that calibration was way off the first time, we now have rock solid aiming. The center of that crosshair is in the center of the mouse pointer. And I will show you how to turn that crosshair off later in the video if you don't want it as well. But it's hyper impressive just how good the aim is on a mouse. But there's so many other ways you can use this emulator with different gun devices because all it's doing is taking the mouse input and transposing it over to the light gun format that the arcade board would expect. So I'm going to show you my favorite way to play this. There's multiple options on the market, but for my money, the gun for IR is the best way to enjoy something like this. You should pair this with the Model 2 emulator. You can pair it with the Model 3 emulator as well, which I'll do in a separate video. And if you want to do any device like this, even if you've already calibrated your mouse cursor, you want to do it a second time when you're in game. This is Gunblade New York. This is an analog game, so it calibrates slightly differently. But any sort of game that uses a gun, not an arcade stick, a steering wheel, or an analog control, you want to calibrate that within the test menu or else it's never going to properly work. I want you to understand that and take that away from the video because you'll see here again without calibration, the aim is completely off. But if I calibrate it in real time, following all the directions on the screen, you'll see in just a moment that the aim is going to be 100% correct. Just remember this, if this is your first time emulating light gun games on something like Model 2, you want to make sure you go through these at least once, and then if you don't change anything in the future, you're going to have the exact same aiming that you would have on masks. You'll see here, this is before I do the House of the Dead, the aim is off, and I come back into this menu again and calibrate it with the gun for IR in those two spots, and just like with the mouse, the aim will be perfect. This always trips people up, so I've dedicated a large amount of the video just to get you guys to understand how to properly set your aiming in light gun games. Now, another thing that tricks a lot of people is the following. If you load up something like Daytona USA and don't go into the test menu yet, it's not going to boot. You're going to see canceled network board not present. That is because the link ID states master. These were multiple cabinets, but you could set them as individual cabinets. By default, the Model 2 emulator is going to see this as master, and it's going to wait for a network connection to a second arcade cabinet. Go into game system, go into link ID, and set it as single. Any other setting, and the game will not boot whatsoever. You can also change the country, change the difficulty, turn on the attract mode sounds on or off. But when you put the link ID to single, I'll do this in real time, go ahead and hit exit. You're going to see that the game is going to boot up like it normally would. And now we can play Daytona USA. I would say this is one of the number one questions I get when people ask about Model 2 emulation. Why can't I get Daytona USA to boot? That is because you need to go into the test menu and set it as single. Anything else, like I said just a moment ago, and it is going to fail the boot test. So remember that any game that says network board not present, switch it to single it'll then run from there on out. Now for other settings, you're going to see emulator.ini and you can go ahead and open that up with notepad. There are some settings you have to change in here that you cannot change within the emulator. 
you'll see by default the full screen width and height are going to be 640 by 480 and if you want anything outside of the normal you have to enter it in here you can go to 1920 by 1080 whatever you really want to do but outside of three presets within the emulator anything you want to do as a custom INI configuration for resolution has to be done in this text menu you can see you can do widescreen full window as well. Zero is going to be off, one is going to be on. You can also do direct anti-aliasing and direct 3D if you switch FSAA from zero to one. These are the only place you can change these particular options. You cannot do it within the Model 2 emulator. There is no drop down menu for that. And just go through this, you'll see some things you don't want to touch, other things for raw input for the mouse, everything like that. You can assign these as you wish, but for the most part, you're really not going to have to go in here. And taking a look at something like Dead or Alive, I prefer rendering these at 640 by 480 to get the original Model 2 look, but you can change that full screen resolution however you want to get the look and appearance you like. Now you will see here, if I go into video, you're going to see full screen resolution. There's four options, and then whatever you set in the custom INI that I just showed you, if you click custom, that'll read that value, and it'll go to full screen from there. So if you want any resolution outside of the four that are automatically preset by the Model 2 emulator, go ahead and go into there, and you can switch to full screen or hit auto switch to full screen when a game launches. And you'll see here on the configure controls option, the only way you can open that is if a game is actively running. You can't configure controls until the game is playable. And then from here, you can bind whatever you want. Again, you'll see I haven't loaded this game up in a long time. There is no binding, so I'll go ahead, use whatever controller you want that works on Windows, and bind every single button the way it should be. Sometimes they show up a little bit screwed up by default. For some reason, it auto-bound everything to the second player. From there, I just hit backspace and turn them all into that key, a key that I'm never going to use just to get them out of the way. But you can configure the buttons however you want. You're going to have to do start as well as coin, and you can change the test and service menu from F2 and F1 to whatever you want. But I highly recommend you just leave those as is because you're going to be using the test menu a lot, especially if you want to adjust the difficulty. So just remember, F1 and F2 are going to be your friends. And if you do everything you've seen here, you're going to get into the game, you're going to be able to set your resolutions, you're going to be able to calibrate your light gun games, bind your controllers both analog as well as digital for all of the racing, fighting games, and shmups on the system. And the most important thing is you're going to be able to have fun. And that's what I'm here for. If you run into any issues, you can leave me a comment down below. But if you need individual help, like I said, that Patreon link with a $10 help me tier is available as well. But short of that, go play some House of the Dead. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.